Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday, February 27th, 2018, and this is the Fantasy Flight Interactive stream for today, uh, where we are going to be playing our first game, Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. Uh, how's everyone doing? All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jersey, I will, uh, I will be sure to let you know. Actually, um, I have some updates uh, that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today um, in terms of news. Um, some other stuff. Um, it's been a busy week here at the uh, at the old Fantasy Flight Interactive offices. I feel like I've been saying that every week because it has been a it's been a pretty busy uh, past couple months for us as we're continuing to uh, polish up the game and get it ready for early access release. Um, so some stuff for today. I have some new uh, I have some new Valor cards for you um, that we're going to be showing off. I think there are two and a half. I'm going to say because we've seen Barleyman pulled out from uh, from Sneak Attack, but we'll take a closer look at him. Um, and that's actually going to wrap up our, uh, our Valor card previews. Um, that being said, uh, we kind of have something in store for next week as well. Um, yeah, so, uh, I will talk about that in a minute here, but first I just wanted to give you kind of a rundown on where we're at with the game currently. Um, we are working on integrating some new narrative screens, so kind of the screens in between, uh, each of the, uh, each of the legs of the campaign, uh, each quest. So because of that, you're going to see a couple bugs within those, uh, but you kind of give an idea of where they are at. Uh, they're a work in progress right now, um, but I really like the new look of them, and uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, we're going to take a look at those, too. Uh, some other stuff. Uh, we're working on a little bit of optimization stuff, so the game's been running a little bit slowly for me. sauron has been taking some time um, to make his decisions. Uh, so just giving you a heads up that that might be something we run into. Uh, if we run into any major bugs, we'll we'll jump out. We're just going to be playing Quest 1 today to uh, take a look at that uh, with this deck, with this deck featuring Eowyn. Um, but yeah, I've been running a little, it's been running a little bit slowly for me today, so apologies in advance for that. Just be ready. Um, that is something like we're aware of and uh, not going to be representative of a final product. Um, yeah, so we're working on those narrative screens. We're actually working on, so we have not shown the tutorial at all. Um, and actually, the one that we had in place um, is something that we are kind of completely revamping. Um, and that's actually where this uh, this incentive to work on the narrative screens came from. So we're working on that, too, a little bit in the uh, in the offices this week and been making sure that that's all in place and ready to go for when the game goes into early access. Um, let's see what else I've got for you today. Oh, so next Tuesday, I thought it would be kind of fun if we did a um, chat builds the deck kind of thing. Um, so we're going to be mostly messing around in the deck builder, putting something together, and then taking it for one of the quests. Um, I don't know if that's going to work out in terms of polling or if I'm just going to be asking chat for like opinions and options on decks. Uh, but yeah, come prepared to um, help me build a deck next Tuesday. Because uh, I think that would be kind of a fun little experiment for us to try. If that's something we like, we can do it in the future. Um, if it doesn't work out, you know, at least we'll uh, get to hang out a little bit, talk about some Lord of the Rings, and take a look at some cards. Um, but I think that'll be a fun time, so we're going to give that a shot. Uh, this Thursday, Tim Gerritsen, my boss, who you have met if you've been watching the streams, um, he's going to be joining us. Tim's going to be joining us uh, to talk a little bit about... Um, some of what's going to be available during early access. We're actually going to be going in depth to each of the levels of Founders Packs um, and any of the ways that you can uh, purchase the game or purchase access to the game during that early access period. We're going to go into that in detail so that you guys have some uh, have some idea of that. Um, that news will then get posted later, but I wanted to kind of give an incentive uh, to the people who are here on Twitch to watch this. They're going to get that information first. Um, because I love you guys, and you guys have been uh, you guys have been joining us so long and been a great audience. So um, we're going to talk to you guys first about that stuff, and then we're going to roll it out um, later, basically. Uh, if you missed it, there was a PC Games N preview uh, that got posted that was pretty pretty interesting. Um, the folks over there did a we did a walkthrough for them, and they uh, they kind of talked about their thoughts a little bit. Uh, I'll be posting that on the Steam page in a little bit to uh, to show that off too. Uh, I think it was a pretty good piece. So we've been talking to them, and as we, uh, as we get ready to roll the game out, you'll be able to read that um, shortly. I'll post that over on the, uh, on the Steam page, too. Um, the last thing is that thank you for joining us. If you joined us on Thursday when we were talking to Steve Gurness, um, the uh, composer for the game, I had a lot of fun doing that interview. I think that that kind of thing is, is kind of interesting. Um, we're going to be playing around with format because I wasn't like super happy with the way it turned out visually, but um, you know it was a work in progress kind of thing and making sure that it worked uh, we had we had to switch platforms and switch a lot of things in order to get uh, to get everything to participate and uh, make OBS integrate totally with with um, with our video chat proj uh, program. 
But in the future, we're going to be doing more of those and probably in a different kind of format. So if there's people on the team that you would like to see interviewed in that style, um, do let me know. Uh, let me know, like, go over Facebook, uh, Steam, or Twitch here. You can leave a message. I, re I do read those. I don't really respond to them, but I do read those. So that's a good place to do that. Um, you know, leave a message somewhere, and uh, I will take a I'll take a look at that and, and take that into account. Um, we might do another one with Caleb. We could do something with that. We could do some of the producers on the game. Um, we could do maybe some art um, and some design stuff. So yeah, if there is an aspect of the game or like an aspect of how working on this game works um, that you are curious about or that you have not uh, that you would like to learn more about, or maybe you have like a professional interest in like that aspect of game development. Um, that's kind of what I'm here for. I'm here to help out with that stuff. So, um, sorry, I had a cord. I was making sure that my headphones weren't hanging because I didn't want to want you to get any feedback on that. Um, anyway, if there's anything like that that you uh, you find interesting or that you would want to learn about, yeah, do let me know, and I will try to do my best to get them on screen. Um, on stream, excuse me. I'm looking at screen. They will also be in screams too. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the plan. Um, we can go into basically in the future, once the game is kind of out, we'll probably kind of pull back the curtain a little bit more and show some more stuff. Um, allow you to take a look at some of the other, some of the other things and kind of talk about the whole process. Um, that's something we want to be really open with and discuss, but you know, not for now. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my spiel for today. Uh, like I said, I've been working on a deck that, uh, I'm excited to show off, but, uh, for a different reason. I actually don't, uh, I'm not completely positive that this, you see I've got two that I was playing around with. Um, I'll show this other one in a second too. Um, so I'm jumping in, here's the deck I'm playing for today. Um, it is kind of like, I, I, my, my plan was basically I wanted to make a control deck work. Uh, so my thoughts in that process was like, Okay, well, let's have something with a low starting threat. Let's do something that can gain advantage over the late game. Obviously, we're going to need a lot of healing, so that was kind of Arwen as an inclusion. Um, and let's go from there, and then we'll do some we'll do some uh, spirit cards as well with it. Uh, whether or not the deck kind of like worked is <laughs> is up for interpretation. I'm actually not super happy with the way the deck ended up playing. It ended up being like I specifically set out to make it slower so that it would work for those control matches. And it ended up being a little bit clunkier than I'd like. Um, so we're going to play it. We're going to see how it is. And then I think maybe we'll revisit it on a future stream. Um, like next Tuesday or something like that. Uh, we can revisit it. Or we can revisit it in the future too. Um, but yeah. So uh, let's take a look at some of the cards. So the first one's Barlum and Butterbur. We showed him on... Uh, we showed him on stream when he got pulled from Sneak Attack. Um, he's a bit of a cheese card. Uh... As you can see on upkeep, he has a 50% chance of drawing you an extra card. Um, so he's a 1-4 uh, with one willpower, and he's a three cost for a unique. Um, like I said, he's kind of cheesy. I'm not sure if he's uh, how strong he's actually going to be, but I'm playing him in this deck, and we're going to see if we can get him to work. Um, see this, if we can get that one card uh, at 50% chance to draw a card to trigger. Um, but yeah, he's fun if you can include him in your decks, basically. Um, Born Aloft, some people also spotted this. This is another new card. Your next defeated ally go returns to your hand. So the first time I looked at this card, I was kind of like, okay, that seems like fine. Um, it might be hard to set up with preparation. In practice, when I started using the card, um, I found it to be like actually like like pretty powerful. Um, and I liked it a lot. You can kind of set up some pretty silly things with like your... Uh, your characters with arrival effects so you you play out like your caregiver attack it into something and then get your caregiver immediately back you know and that attack is an exhaustion you're not really losing a card because of that so like this this is the kind of engine card that i think you could actually build around in an interesting way like you play this with like reinforcement sneak attack and um uh tree people and you could do something really interesting and that's actually what i was uh what I was talking about with that last, uh, with that other deck that I was working on, and I'll show that in a minute because I think it's interesting and there's a cool idea going on there. Um, and then the last card I had to show you today is Gladriel's Handmaiden. Um, one cost ally, so this is like a lower on the curve, um, no attack obviously, two willpower is pretty good for one, uh, for one cost, and then one health, so she's gonna die to basically every attack that she receives, um, but on arrival she's going to lower your threat by one. You can do some pretty cool stuff with that card. Um, 
being such a cheap ally and the fact that it is sylvan means that it it uh it integrates with tree people as well so i've got that card included in my deck here too uh so yeah so this is kind of what we're playing for today um like i said it's a bit of a mess we'll see if we can get it to work we're going to go through that first quest and see how we do uh and then maybe in the future we'll return to the deck after we've uh have some better idea over how uh how the deck works and what we want it to do in the future but yeah there's some cool stuff here Um, so the other deck that I wanted to show, sorry, my deck builder's bugging out a little bit here. Uh, the other deck that I wanted to show you guys today that I was playing around with is these, this, uh, this spirit deck. So this is, this is leadership spirit tactics. And the reason that is, is because it's, uh, built around tree people. For those who have not seen tree people yet, um, tree people allows you to return a sylvan ally to your hand, um, to play another sylvan ally. So this is the sylvan bouncing that you see in the tabletop too, um, Basically, this card combined with the Sylvan characters who have powerful uh, arrival effects. I don't have Search by Trait in integrated in this build right now. Um, but some of your powerful Sylvan characters are the Handmaiden, the Archer. Um, you also have, uh, I believe there's one more within Spirit. Um, is there a healer? There might be some... No, it can't be healing. Oh, the Courier, the Woodland Courier. Um, so when she arrives, she applies one progress. So you have a lot of like really powerful um, arrival effects with the Sylvans. So that combined with um, tree people, I thought was sort of interesting, especially with Born Aloft, where you can potentially get these cards back in your hand, um, and you can start kind of looping them, and uh, I don't know, do some degenerate things with that, basically. Uh, I could not really get it to work, so I'm still trying to decide like who the hero suites should be for this. Like I don't know if Aragorn, I don't know if Aragorn, um, Eowyn, and uh, and Legolas are really the heroes to be doing this with. I kind of feel like you need some amount of card draw so you kind of need a lore hero i was thinking faramir in this slot but then you lose the ability to play gallant hunt archer and your overall your level of your number of um sylvan allies goes down so it gets a little bit harder to play the engine but uh i've been thinking a lot about this deck basically now uh and how i how i try to get it to work because you know tree people is one of those cards that like just screams out to me like do do broken things with me um, whenever you have a cost on a card or a restriction that is actually a benefit, so like returning a card to your hand, you can usually do some silly stuff with it. So I, I have a feeling that this card is going to do some really powerful things in a build similar to this, in that includes Born Aloft, um, but I'm just not there yet. So here's something to think about, I guess, if you know we can contribute to the hive mind. Um, if this is the kind of list that uh, gets your gets your card game gears going in the same way as me you know let me shut me out and uh let me know if you have any ideas for how to improve a build like this or, or put it together but um yeah it's, it's just not quite there yet and i think it could be and i think it could do some interesting stuff so I'd, I'd like to show this off on a future stream too if i keep playing around with it um but yeah those were the two decks that i wanted to show you like i said we're going to be playing with the aon deck we're going to see how far we can get um aon herself has had some changes um since the last time we saw her let me see if I can put together, if I hit create a new deck, well, let me take a look at heroes. No, it looks like it's all bugged out, fortunately, folks. Um, we'll take a look at her within play here. Yeah, again, often Tom are not in the deck because um, we've integrated a new feature where if you are building a deck, um, sorry, my camera's going out of focus because it's still from that interview on Thursday. Um, we integrated a new feature within the uh, within the deck builder where you include, uh, when you start to build a new deck, you're going to get... Um, just the cards that could possibly be in your deck so you won't look at the level two cards you will only or um like if i have a leadership tactic spirit deck i'm not going to look at lore cards um unfortunately when we integrated that uh the neutral cards were cut out of that system too so that's another bug that we've uh, we've got missing in the game right now but basically in the future this deck would probably play a neutral character in, in all likeliness it would probably do the one tom one gandalf split um, but yeah, that was a kind of a way of streamlining. I really like the change for deck building. Obviously, we got to get the bug ironed out, but that was something that was added like, this morning, basically. So that's why we got that in here. Um, so yeah, let's jump in and tech, uh, check out the play here. Um, like I said, we're going to just do quest one because I was having trouble with the deck, and I kind of just wanted to get you guys uh, an idea of how the engine is working and like the trouble and the problems I'm having with this building. Um, yeah, I did have tree, trees, tree people in the search bar there, um, but that was because I was looking at the other, I think I had the other deck open. Uh, so this is kind of what I'm talking about with the, um, 
with the new screens, with the new narrative screens. Uh, this isn't final, obviously, but this is kind of the direction we're taking it. Um, we wanted to uh, kind of uh, make sure that it was a the map was a little bit more available. Uh, like I said, this isn't final. This is something that's still being integrated. There's a couple of things missing still, um, but you can kind of see the direction we're taking it. Okay, so here we have our opening hand. Um, so, Born Aloft, I don't think we need. We're not going to keep Barlumen. We're not going to keep Forest Snare, um, which I've gone back and forth on this card. I thought this card was going to be really, really powerful, and then like taking a whole turn off to not increase your heroes and not help your allies um, ends up being a little bit more difficult than I thought it was. So I think the card's still very good. I just think it's way more balanced than we thought it was, basically. I'm going to keep the accent. I'm going to keep the shield. Depending on what song I'm plays, I either want to improve my heroes or I want to make my party a little bit uh, a little bit bigger. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to play. We get some card draw and we get a, an archer. Um, here with both the Mithrander's advice, it actually makes sense to take the cash. Um, if we do, well, then we'll just go to three basically. If we, because if we Mithrander's advice and then cash, we'll just go back up to three, which isn't hugely advantageous. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the wealth again. Um, and let's jump in. So we've seen this quest before. There's gonna be a, maybe a couple card changes. We'll shout them out as they happen. But some, some Sauron stuff has been updated. Um, we will shout them out as they happen. If they happen, that is. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at Eowyn real quick. So, uh, last time we saw her, it was, uh, she gained an increase in willpower when the first friendly character was defeated each turn. Um, now she's actually going to get that willpower bu buff when the first friendly character is damaged. Um, so her willpower goes up from 2 to 4 the first time that a character takes damage on your side of the field. Um, she's a 2-8 for 9 threat. So, she's kind of an interesting card. I... I personally feel that Eowyn is going to get a lot more powerful once we start seeing some of the other stuff that might be within the game. Um, but right now, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to find a home for her that's super powerful. Uh, basically, you just have to make sure she doesn't exhaust, which is why we're playing both Starbrooch and uh, Shield of Rohan within this deck, which will give her stalwart. Uh, Mighty Ducks, I see you're asking about card design. So I haven't really talked about this much, but um, the visual design is not final. And that's about all I can really say. Uh, we might have some more information for her later, basically. Uh, um, excuse me, uh, more information for you later about that. Um, but yeah, card design is not final by any means. Um, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to put the shield out. That's a lot of enemies. Seized his resources to play out the Beastmaster, brings with him an orc hound. Um, and if we don't defeat this thing, then these other orcs are going to get pursuit as well. So we need to... We basically need to be combat focused. Um, that being said, this is the other problem with the deck. Since it's one two two, like you don't really have that much attack. Um, I could play out an axe hand here. Axe hand takes out one of these guys and then absorbs a hit. That's like fine. That's wealth. Yeah, no problem, my ducks. Um. Some people have been asking about that, and basically, like, I, I wish I could give more information, but, like, I just can't at this point. Um, yeah, but we, you know, everything is, like, like, one of the benefits of doing this stream is that I'm able to be, like, really open with you guys, and, like, I can siphon out information in, like, a conversational way, but one of the downsides is that you're going to see everything, you know, like, we're, we're, we're parting the curtain a little bit, um, but we kind of feel it's important. Um, yeah, I, I could also play the scout here. If I play the scout, um, hey, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Lass. Uh, if you are, yeah, game dev jobs in Madison. If you are a member of the community in Madison, there's like, there's a little bit like there's a scene going on that's super cool. I don't know if you were at Indicate or any of those events too, but there's some there's some cool uh, game design stuff going on around here, and we're happy to contribute to that and be part of that, basically. Um, thanks, Mighty Ducks. I really appreciate that, and thanks to everybody who's joining us. Um, Let's see what I can do here. I'm going to play out the scout. Because I, I feel like I want to trade. I'm going to trade with one of the, the patrols and then exhaust. Like, the best case scenario, I exhaust the elite orcs. The worst case scenario, we exhaust the one one attack enemy, which is not not even that bad. So we're going to play him out, immediately attack with him. He's going to die and then exhaust one of these other characters, basically. So that's where we're at. So let's attack into the, uh, the patrol. Okay, so we got our... Basically, our our worst uh, our worst 
possible hit there. No living man am I. Uh, I'm okay with attacking in with Eowyn here. I don't have stalwart on her or any other way to work toward the objective here, so we're kind of wasting that activation, I but it's, I think it's okay to put the three damage on her, basically. Um, kind of surprised that nobody pointed this out. Uh, so this opening for quest one, which you've seen many times, um, we've changed it a little bit. So the opening setup was different than the, the normal opening setup that you see. Uh, namely, there's no Dolgador orcs, so that 2-4 that with guard. Um, and also blocked path is not something that's out by default anymore. Um, so the the opening this basically the opening staging for Sauron in this particular location in quest one has changed um, I think for the better basically because we've been able to kind of take some of the challenge that exists within the ex the first quest of the game and uh, siphon it off to other areas that sort of needed that challenge and basically make this a little bit easier to read for a first time user um, it might not be as exciting to you guys, since most of you probably have a pretty good idea of, of how the game functions. Um, but I th it's been, I think for new players, it's going to be something that's that's very exciting. So let's uh, put the shield up there. Um, Koi, uh, asking about early access. So I don't have any information to share with you today. Um, there will be, you know, I don't want to like hint of a hint of a hint or anything like that, but basically when Thursday with Tim on the stream, um, we're going to be able to get, uh, give you kind of an idea of where we're at and uh, where we're going to be going in the future and those kinds of announcements. So one more time, sit tight, but Thursday, um, I'm going to be able to be a little bit less candid with some, some stuff about uh, where the game's going. And it's like, I don't know, we're in a very good place, basically, like... Um, like, there, there's no kind of doom and gloom or anything like that. I know, you know... I, I don't want anybody to be worried about where the game's at or anything like that. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I really wanted to say about that. A red sun rises. Yeah, did I say something other than more candid? I've been, uh... I've been talking non-stop on this. I threw out my water bottle earlier. I, ha I usually have a water bottle that I, re I refill, and uh, I absentmindedly threw it out, so I've been without access to water. Um, so I'm going a little loopy, so excuse me if I misspeak a little bit there. Thank you, Steve. All right, let's uh, let's heal up Arwen. Said less candid. Yes, <laughs> I am going to be less candid. We are going to be incredibly cagey. No, yeah, uh, less candid, hopefully. Uh, more candid, excuse me, not less candid. Um, yeah. Like I said, man, it's been a long week. <laughs> been, been very busy. Okay, so we got our, our guard spider out here, the giant spider, 2-6 with guard. Um, we can ignore it, though. Guard, remember, doesn't block objectives anymore, so we can go right for the objective here and not really worry as much about it. Um, that being said, I'm going to take this opportunity to play out. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it, McDuck. <laughs> Lemon, it's only Tuesday. Um, I'm going to play out the veteran axe hand, uh, get some stuff out on the field while we still can. I could also play the Born Aloft um, in preparation for playing it in the future. Which actually is not like a terrible idea because we go born aloft, um, go toward the objective, uh, the spider, three, four, five. So no matter what, we clear the objective this turn. We play veteran axe hand plus born aloft. Next turn, we go troll shaw scout, attack it into something, get a troll shaw scout back, and then we can loop that for the turn after too and just keep on doing that. Which actually, like planning that out, in, unless Sauron does something to interact with our board. Which he's going to get his his bonus at his thirty threat. He's going to get the threat event there. But unless he does something like that, like this is uh, that that seems like a pretty good plan. Alternatively, we could go to play out the veteran axe hand, keep the last one. Thank you. Um, keep the last one. And uh, my producer Charlie just dropped off a a, a water for me here. Um, <laughs> just popped into the office and dropped one off for me, which I greatly appreciate. So uh, should be okay now. Anyway. <laughs> We play out the Veteran Axe Hand. Next turn, we play out Arraignment of War and get that out on one of our characters already, which would be okay. But I actually kind of like the I kind of like the Veteran Axe Hand Born Aloft play, so let's do that. Play Born Aloft here, and uh, we'll end our planning phase. Um, I'm going to clear with A1 first. Make sure I get that activation. 
Uh, the spider's gonna jump in here. Yep. And, uh... We'll clear, and then on this uh, on this new narrative screen, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this water here. For a second. Jump back in. You are traveling deeper into Mirkwood, along an overgrown trail, when giant spiders ambush your party. They wrap one of your friends in a silken cocoon with horrifying speed, then drag their captive off to be devoured. You cannot abandon That's good water about folks. To such a fate. All right, let's jump in. So we're doing okay here. I mean, we just lost Legolas to the cocoon. Um, for people who haven't seen this uh, this Leg of the Ad Adventure yet, um, here our objective is to resolve the cocoon and rescue our friend here, uh, who happens to be Legolas. So one of our heroes gets captured in this cocoon, and we have to clear the objective in order to get him back. Um, I think we're going to stick with the Troll Shaw plan. Seems okay to me. We go Troshaw scout, um, exhaust whatever enemy, and then uh, deal two to one of them. Oof, that's not great. Hummer horns is really problematic, especially if it gets okay. The spider's gonna get stalwart. That's also problematic. Fortunately, none of them have pursuit, so like usually I could just I I could just go for the objective. The only thing is like. I can ensure. Well, if I play an ally out here, then I can ensure. So I go Trollshaw Scout, Objective, Trollshaw somebody. Trollshaw in here to hopes to hit one of them and then go. Yeah, I don't think this changes our plan at all, actually. So let's let's give it a shot. Because no, a single attack can't kill the axe hand. What I was worried was that Bornaloff would trigger and get us the axe hand back, but a well, single attack can't do that, so we can still quest with Arwen first, then attack with the Trollshaw scout and keep going, basically. So it seems good to me. Let's give it a shot. Um, Arwen here. I don't think my math's off at all here. Okay. So, Born Aloft did not trigger, which is interesting. Um, that's also a bug. So it's probably because I played it at the last location, so it's uh, having some trouble recognizing that an ally was defeated. Um, so that's good to have in the uh, have in the old file there. We're able to travel here, nonetheless. Um, the scout did what it's got to do. Uh, but yeah, you can kind of see what I'm going at with uh, with what some of the cool things with Born Aloft. Like that would be a situation where if we if that triggered the way it was supposed to, um, we actually get a pretty pretty big advantage. Um, yeah, I, uh, I I like that card a whole lot, and I want to do some cool stuff with it in the future. Okay. Um, I think we're going to turn in Fleece still. Like I said, I, I wasn't even expecting us to make it this far. Um, but while we still got the opportunity, let's not test our luck, I guess. Um, you also see we got some placeholder text up here with the tutorial. It's not supposed to, to be there. Yeah, thanks, Caliber. I, I agree that, like I said, Born Aloft is a, a cool card that you can do some really neat stuff with. And, I mean, imagine pulling out an ally with sneak attack or reinforcements or tree people, then getting it back in your hand or whatever, being able to play it again. Um, that's the kind of thing that I was really excited for for that other deck and was trying to build around. So, like I said, you know, if that if that inter if that interaction is the kind of thing you are interested in as a player, please help me make that deck a little bit better. <laughs> um, give me some ideas for cool things to do. Obviously, like the arrival effects on characters is something that you know, you know like within Tom and, Tom and Gandalf are, are a natural inclusion in that deck too. Um, you would definitely want him in there. Want them both in there actually. Um, so here's another change. We kind of noticed that um, a lot of our characters within this first location were feeling kind of samey. Um, specifically, like, the spiders, all, they basically all had guard. Um, so we are trying out the spiders of Mirkwood as a vanilla 3-4, um, so that the spiders have a uh, vanilla, kind of like the East Fight Patrol is a vanilla. When I say vanilla, I just mean a character um, without a text box beyond its... Uh, beyond its stats. So we're trying out the spiders as a 3-4 um, vanilla instead of giving them guard like they had previously, and we're going to see how that goes, basically. Um, yeah, so just another one of those little tweaks and, and tunes and balance, uh, balancing things that we have been uh, working on for the past couple weeks here. Um, I kind of want to self-preserve one of my characters, 
However, they are so low on life that it almost doesn't feel like a worthy investment. What I would really love to do is be able to go to give one of my characters stalwart, quest twice, and then, and then like finish it off two, three, and then four. So I, I don't want to play the outrider because it has zero willpower, and I think that that might actually be important. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna draw some cards. There's Starbrooch. Surge would be good if we could ensure that our characters are protected. I don't, I don't want to invest a resource and then get it immediately. Excuse me. Uh, I don't want to invest a resource and then get it immediately refunded by Sauron, basically, from playing something out. So I'm actually just going to play another. I'm going to go with the more conservative play, uh, which might be less interesting, but I think is going to get us through it in the long run, more likely. Uh, we have to exhaust this 3-3. Uh, this three, three. If we send one of the dwarves in, then Legolas can finish it off with his upkeep activation. Um, King Spider here has ve ugh, block. That's not great. We have to remember that because also this block is going to block the one damage from Legolas. So we have to make sure we don't point it at him. So uh, get ready for me to make that mistake in like two minutes. <laughs> because I'm sure that that's basically how it always goes. Um, okay. Okay, so we lose the axe hand. That's like fine. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, seven, eight. So we are able to clear. Let's, uh, let's do that then. That is the one thing about this deck. This deck is so high in, in willpower that, like, if you don't have pursued enemies, you're usually just okay. Legolas kind of does feel like the, the odd man out. I almost feel like maybe this would do better as a double lore spirit deck. Playing, like, Mablung then. And, uh, well, you, you lose all these attachments, though. I guess we're not using, we have a lot of red in our hand that we just haven't been playing. So maybe it isn't necessary for this to be a tactics deck. I really like the idea of Raiment of War in a... Uh, Raiment, excuse me. Um, everybody loves Raiment. Uh, I really like the idea of Raiment of War in a... Uh, in a control deck, though. So, like, that was appealing to me. And then Faint, too. You know, like, Faint and then some of these other damage sources felt like it could be powerful. But maybe it is just better to just, like, focus more on, on healing and, and controlling the board. I don't know. Stuff to think about. Because I, I've definitely played like aggro decks. I feel like I've played can, I've played like mid range, and I've definitely played combo. But I haven't really done like straight up control. What are yellow stars? Oh, you mean the willpower value? So that value in the middle of the card um, shows how good these characters are at playing uh, at playing um, at clearing objectives, basically. So beyond just combat, this game focuses on these objectives. Sometimes they are to get to the next location. Um, sometimes they are going to be to, like, here, I can, if I, uh, contribute six willpower to this quest, I'm gonna be able to heal all my characters. Um, I don't have to do it to beat it. I only need to defeat this enemy in order to move forward, but it has, gives me an option for having high willpower, basically. Um, so it's kind of a dimension that you don't really see in other card games, uh, but it, it is, it is a way of us, like, uh, getting across through game design the idea that this is an adventure, it's a quest, it's not necessarily a, uh, just about combat. I'm getting a little bit of a, um, sorry, I'm getting a little bit of a drop in my stream quality, so let me know if you guys are having any issues or if anybody's having any technical issues. I had, it looks like it was just a temporary dip, um, so you might see a little bit of an issue there, but that shouldn't stick that way. Uh, let me know if it's something that persists, though. I'm gonna faint out, uh, the elite orcs here. We don't have to worry. The marsh adder is unique, unfortunately, so we cannot faint it. Okay, cool. Good to know. Yeah, we had some uh, we had some issues earlier, last week I think it was, um, with internet. But this wasn't a similar thing. I think this might just be on Twitch's end because I had a. Uh, this 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 was through their network. It looks like I was having a, a lower bit rate, so I don't I don't think that's on our end. But um, I'm gonna have to investigate that because that was very strange. I'm gonna keep the outrider alive as long as I can by sending him into the zero. Zero attack enemy. Now we don't have to send anybody else into him, however, because of oh, Legolas is not the not the character I wanted to lose there. Um, hmm. So the Marsh Adder's got Stalwart and Surge, so attacking it is not going to exhaust it. Um, I'm gonna basically just oh, and we can't. Now the Elite Orc's not going to die either. Oh, we can still Archer it. Yeah, but is that the best use of Archer? Yeah, losing Legolas there hurts a lot, Advisor. We are doing, like, better than I thought we were going to on this quest, to be honest, with this deck. Um, but, uh, 
Still not doing fantastic. Let's heal up our, uh, our, our heroes here. That's actually kind of big. This Starbridge is all but useless against this enemy too, which is unfortunate. Uh, we're gonna Archer him down. I think that's the obvious play. I think we're gonna try to Rainman a character too next turn, so we want to save two resources so we can go. We can go Archer. War Oof. We can go Archer Warrior Sword on a character. Um, I don't think it really matters who, but we want to save a resource so we have enough to Ray Rayman next turn. Uh, let's take out the uh, the Elite Orcs there. Uh, and let's put a warrior sword up on Arwen. Just in case, I, I guess in case Eowyn goes down. We're saving our last resource. And we'll move forward. No living man. Attack in. Uh, normally I just chump with the archer, but the archer has range, so we actually want to... Okay. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say we want to get as much value out of it as possible, which would mean attacking multiple times. Now I suppose Born Aloft decides to trigger. That's that's interesting. Uh, maybe it was because it was from our attack. Maybe it's only working when a character is defeated when we do the activation. Which I don't think is the intention. Um, but that seems to be the only reason why that would why that would go that way. Uh, like I said, work in progress. Thanks for bearing with us. One of the cool things I feel like about these streams is that I can be like relatively honest. <laughs> relatively i can be honest with you guys about like what what's happening and why things are happening the way they are um if you notice we had a new graphic integrated for the threat event um the old one was kind of a placeholder so we've got a new one anyway i can be honest with you guys about like bugs and things like that and uh that's super cool and uh means that i i don't feel like i really have to you know do mental gymnastics and figure out how to explain stuff because you know it's the game is progressing um i'm going to give the raiment of war to what if I just load up Arwen? Like, give her a better chance of surviving. Yeah, Uftok showing up right on cue. Hey, buddy. How's it going? 3-7. He's gonna... So, if he's... Sur we, we, oh, we can kill this round, though. Because... Oh, ah, she doesn't have Stalwart. I don't know why I thought she had Stalwart, but she, I, I think she does. So that's a mistake. That was a huge mistake, actually. We should have attacked with Arwen instead. Ooh, that's a huge mistake. Oh, we can outright. No, we can't double Outrider. I was thinking we could double Outrider. But we can go Outrider, hit it. Clear it with the Outrider's attack. Yeah, I think we can actually make it. We, I think we're going to have it. You see you see the play? I'm I, sorry, I got excited and I didn't quite explain myself well. The play that I'm thinking about making here is Westfold Outrider 2 on the guard here. Because the guard is blocking our enemy, so we can't clear unless we kill the guard. 2 damage on the guard. Attack in to the guard. But the problem is, like... Then we don't have enough characters on the board. What if I give her Surge? Does that change the math at all? She gets Surge. She attacks in. Attacks there. Stays at 1. Uh, Uftok was always a, uh, a unique divisor. He had the symbol, and he was always popping up as a, uh, as a one-of within the deck. Gandalf would be so good here. Gandalf would be pretty incredible here. Is there anything else that we could do? I guess we play out the archer and, like, just hope that, like, putting more targets out does something. We come riding. Archer... Oh, I see what you're saying, Advisor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, he's a unique within within the game here. We have a named characters as unique kind of policy going on. Alright. So we did it. I'm, like, kind of in shock. <laughs> So the uh, the orc hound ended up going after the archer instead of uh, exhausting out Arwen, um, trying to get a kill, um, which will happen. Those the hounds, like a lot of the other beasts, are pretty aggressive, 
So it goes after it tries to get the kill, and then we ended up making it through the quest somehow with uh, with just Arwen surviving. Um, not optimal. Um, I think we played pretty tight though. Like I don't, we didn't make a ton of mistakes even with the Born Aloft not doing. But yeah, here we are. Uh, pretty excited about that. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what I had to show for you guys today. Like I said, I kind of want to revisit this deck in the future. Um, or at least try to build a control deck in a similar shell within similar colors. Part of me feels like maybe we just don't play tactic. See, you see, you look at this and then there's a lot of red here. So not playing tactics doesn't really make sense. But like buffing our characters just didn't really feel all that powerful. So maybe it would make sense to just play level two... Uh, some level two uh, lore cards and just focus more on that. Like Lembus would have probably been good in a lot of spots there. Lembus plus Eowyn feels really strong because they take the damage and then you get to activate her twice. You can either get a willpower or ensure that she can quest. So maybe that's just the future for it. Yeah, like Sylvan Tracker would have also probably been pretty good. He's a level one, so we could have included him in this build, but give Eowyn stealth and then have somebody else get hit, and then use her to clear an objective once she gets the four. <laughs> yeah. Bjorn Aloft should be a, should definitely be a combo. Bjorn Aloft should be an achievement, is what I say. Um, but uh, if we... Look, if we started making, uh, integrating things just based on wordplay that I thought was funny, um, the game would be entirely puns. It would not be a card game at all. It would just be a series of puns. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm looking at for this deck. I'm kind of thinking that maybe level two lore would be a cool idea. Um, and then we were talking about it earlier, but the other deck that I was taking a look at here was a, uh, a tree people deck that's all about pulling allies from your, uh, from your deck and into play. Um, again, trying to get that to work. I'm going to play around with it in the future and maybe, maybe we'll be able to show it off on a future stream once I'm like comfortable with it and feel like it's strong enough to do cool things. Um, maybe I'll play around with this on stream, but I am trying to get this figured out myself still. So, uh, we'll go from there. But, uh, all that being said, thank you for joining us. I had a lot of fun today. Um, it was fun talking to you guys and being able to, uh, go over this deck and, uh, hang out for a little bit. Uh, so thanks again for joining us on Thursday. Like I said earlier, uh, Tim Gerritsen, my boss, is going to be on stream with me. We're going to be talking a little bit about, uh, the Founders Packs and Early Access and, uh, basically how you're going to be able to get access to this game uh, before release and what our plans are for that too uh we're going to be going over some of that information so probably no gameplay or if there is any gameplay just a little bit um but we're going to be focusing more on that for thursday's stream so please tune in please join us if you miss it uh check out the vods let us know uh feel free to leave comments on those vods some people have been doing that um yeah uh so yeah we're just going to be talking mostly about those founders packs on thursday basically um, yeah, feel free to leave comments on VODs. I read those. Um, I don't respond, but I do read them. Um, somebody mentioned on Thursday's stream that they liked the music from Chef's Table, <laughs> um, which I will forward to Steve Gurness. If you're watching that stream, the person who left that comment, um, I'll let him know, um, because that's super cool that you recognize that. Uh, so sign-offs. Um, as always, my name is Luke. I'm the community manager here at Fantasy Flight Interactive. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at FFI underscore games. You can find us on Facebook.com slash FFI games, YouTube.com slash Fantasy Flight Interactive, where you can find any of these, uh, any of these, uh, old streams archived. You can also check us out here on Twitch. There's some VODs and, uh, you can join us live, twitch.tv slash FFI games. Um, check us out on the Steam community. Join us over on the Steam forums. People have been talking about different things over there. We've had some conversations about cosmetics, about card balance, some really cool stuff. Um, and I'd love to see more people post. We are, we kind of take a little bit more of an active role on, uh, on those steam forums we don't uh, apply to we don't reply to every thread but uh, i do check them out so like it's worth posting there i guess is uh what i'm trying to get at um yeah let us know um share some stuff as you continue to see it uh we're gonna have a, a couple more uh articles going up including that pc games and a piece um and some other ones should be coming up pretty soon here uh we are still applying we are still hiring excuse me we're still hiring for a technical designer a game designer to join us here in madison wisconsin if you are a game designer with any kind of experience within unity um if you are interested in that kind of a position uh please apply we love to see more applications we love to see more people join us on the team um, you know, if you're passionate about card games and you, uh, you are a game developer, we would love to hear from you. You are the exact person we want to hear from you. And like I was talking to, uh, Lass earlier within the chat, um, there's a pretty cool community for game design here in Madison, too. So if you're going to be moving over here, um, it would be great to see you join us. 
Um, and then finally, um, please, if you have not added this game to your Steam wish list, please do so. Uh, you'll get up to minute dates, uh, up to date minute updates. I suppose is what I'm trying to say, um, on the status of the game, its release, uh, and any kind of other things that will be going on Steam, and it uh, is a good way to let our publishers know that you are interested in the game and you uh, are looking to get access to that early access. Um, best way to let us know is uh, you know, let us know on a wish by wishlisting the game. Um, yeah, and then finally, uh, I see some people are asking about card backs and cosmetics. Uh, we're going to be going over those on Thursdays too. So, like I said, um, basically we're going to be going over the what the founders packs will include and the cosmetics, and that's kind of the information we're going to be sharing on Thursday. So uh, stay tuned for that. So yeah, thanks again for joining us, guys. Have a uh, have a lovely Tuesday, and we'll see you on Thursday. Bye.